Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Customs. I'm Andrew and on the bench today is a Hot Wheels Land Rover Defender 90 produced from 2020 to today. Designed by Dmitry Shakmarov, it's numbered GHB38. Mine's brand new out of the box so there's not a thing wrong with it. <laughs> Just be patient. Hey, why don't you take a moment right now and hit the subscribe button in the bottom right corner of your screen and the notification bell so you don't miss the buddy build with Ricky from iRefix Diecast or the annual Three Blind Mice Paint It Pink build, both in October. My wife's going to participate with me in the Paint It Pink job to help raise awareness for breast cancer along with the rest of the hobby community. As you would expect from a brand new model, there's not any imperfections or defects on this. It's brand new and looking clean, but I'm going to go to work on this using a couple of weathering techniques I've not yet used before. It's an experiment, not a tutorial. The community shout-out goes to Pimp My Diecast, a channel name that I wish I had gotten to first. Uh, Paul does great work here and he is very knowledgeable about his cars. I actually look forward to Paul's comments on my channel because inevitably he has a personal story about driving whatever it is I just customized. Check out Paul's channel. I left a link in the description. And Paul, forgive me, brother, for what I'm about to do to this iconic British 4x4. While well, the paint stripping gel is doing its job, I go to work with a big intensity metallic pen on some of the exterior chrome features. And I suspect that when I'm all done, nothing's going to look too shiny or chromey. But a weathering job is a series of steps built one upon the other, and so it starts out this way. But it's not going to end up this way, I can promise you that right now. Hey look what just arrived in the mail. I got my first set of Maple Leaf Customs channel stickers from Sticker Mule. These are really good quality vinyl stickers and I'm excited to trade with you. So if you'd like to get one, let me know with an address and I'll put it in the mail for you all the way from Switzerland. The paint removal didn't go as completely as expected, but it just takes a couple of moments and a little bit of elbow grease with a brass brush to take that sticker off. And I actually want to leave this fairly rough, so I'm not going to do any fine bare metal detail, but I will take out a cutting tool attachment. And off comes the passenger side door. I use my needle files for a little bit of fine work on the rough edges. You'll see why in no time at all. There are a variety of techniques for weathering your car effectively. I've already, as a beginner, used some cheap acrylic paints. Table salt might be the cheapest way to go, or you can invest a little bit more in some commercial products like AK Interactive Chipping Fluid, Typhus Corrosion, there's a rust wash, there's a variety of black washes you can use, and Common Hairspray gives you the same effect as these, and I'll try them all in upcoming videos. I like to start with a rust-colored primer, and what I'm doing now with a sponge is just applying some splotches of slightly off-color rust, a little bit more orange. And this is all going to be underneath, but what I hope will be revealed after the chipping process is over. While some paint is drying, I get out that black wash. I'm using Vallejo here just to dull everything down and take the shine away. Today I'm using the salt chipping technique and the first step is to spray a little water mist on there and then just drop common table salt everywhere. And the idea here is the next coat of paint, the top coat, is going to go on the body over top of the salt that you've sprinkled on there. And when that is dry, which takes a half hour or so, you simply brush away the salt 
and that's going to reveal the rust coat that's underneath and it gives you a very realistic almost to scale weathering effect look at that I tape off the body and I put the salt on the roof so that I can give that another color application often the Land Rover roof is white and that gives an even more stark contrast between the paint and the rust underneath gotta have something that's off color from the rest of the car for some contrast and today I've chosen an ochre yellow to put on the driver's side door brushed on on purpose so it looks like a home repair job now I've got a Dremel burr tool and I'm going right back to bare metal just in some highlight areas that I want to look the most weathered. Around the fender wells, under the windows, wherever I think water might accumulate the most. In preparation for a chemical dip, another new technique for me, I'm using iron 3 chloride. It's also called ferric chloride or iron trichloride. It's highly corrosive not to be used by children and you can see it aggressively attacks the bare metal. I had already given a matte clear coat finish to the rest of the paint which protects it and there's no reaction with the stainless steel hemostats either but look at the realistic 3D effect that you get from this and a little bit of black wash is simply going to highlight where the bare metal has actually been corroded away just like it would have been if left out in the elements. You can repeat this step multiple times as long as you go back to bare metal in the areas you want to be affected the most. It's a great technique. You can actually make your own iron 3 chloride solution at home with a very simple recipe that you can find online. I bought mine already pre-done again in just a 40% solution so it's not as corrosive but still to be fully respected. Once again, in the spirit of trying things that are new for me, I'm attempting a spider web crack technique on this new and pristine windshield that I just took care to highlight the wipers on. And I'm just using a craft knife here and digging in deeply. If you're creatively artistic or not, you can make some realistic looking cracks. On the back, I want it to look absolutely broken. Remember, it's a series of levels of weathering that goes into making these look as realistic as possible. And after the salt chipping and the chemical dip and the black wash, I'm going with my Tamiya weathering powders now basically all over the body of this, taking away any shine at all, because this is to look as if it's been out in a field. See how effective that looks, especially on the hood and the corners where I went back to bare metal and did the dip. A little more rust wash on there, especially where the most aggressive weathering is to take place. Now I use a little bit of panel liner just to accentuate the shot lines on the doors and the elevated roof ridges and make them stand out as if some dirty rainwater had accumulated in these areas. Citadel Typhus Corrosion is another product that gives a very realistic effect wherever you apply it sparingly. The maniacal destruction of the Defender is not yet finished. Having removed the passenger side door, I now have to take out a little bit of the side panel from the plastic interior, so there's a realistic opening there. I've also cut out the original Hot Wheels little pizza pan steering wheel. I'm going to replace that with a 3D printed one. And your imagination is running wild with why I'm doing such destructive work. More distressing. Why have two headlights when it's been out in a field for so long with kids throwing rocks at it? 
Now I'm painting a series of minuscule 3D printed parts that I'm not even going to give you a close-up of yet. You have to guess what's happening here in these final few steps of the weathering process. But here's the casting body as it is at this stage. Very happy with that, but I'm going to make a tarp out of some tissue paper and some Mod Podge. It's a very simple process. I water down the Mod Podge just a little bit so it's not so heavy. Soak the tissue paper in that, fold it up in whatever way you wish, and mine is spilling out of the cutaway passenger door where I've also removed a part of that interior. It goes out from the inside right down to ground level. I let that dry overnight and then using the basic super cheap acrylic paints I've mixed up a sort of a mottled orange color that I'm going to apply. More black wash to give it an aged and dirty look. And yes, I even paint the underneath of the tarp. And look at this, how small can you get with these 3D printed parts? That's a wheel hub that I made and I'm painting it silver and then I'm going to mess it up with a little bit of rust wash. And I've taken off the front passenger tire. I was trying to think of all the different ways I can make this look weathered and beaten. I used a Pringles potato chip lid as a little diorama. Here's a cinder block to hold up that missing wheel under the hub. This is a cylinder head that I printed. It's come out from under the hood. And this is the world's smallest camshaft. Look at the intricate detail these 3D printers can give you. A little to scale jerry can finishes it off nicely. I put my channel logo on the bottom with no weathering effects on top of that. And here we go for a closer look. I'm quite pleased with how these new weathering techniques have worked out for me on this, the first experimental run. You can see that it's actually a 3D relief effect that I got. And that combined with the black wash and the rust wash and the broken windows and the spiderweb cracks and a tarp and a rusty wheel hub. I think I achieved the effect that I wanted to just right, but I'm still learning and I'll get better at these effects for sure. Hot Wheels did a nice job in the beginning. It was simply a muddy defender, as a defender should be but I went to the extra mile and left mine out in a field for a long time behind the barn, and it looks like this. Beaten to within an inch of its life, but it's a Land Rover Defender. It's gonna live again, because these are indestructible. It just needed to be hooked up to a chain and dragged into the garage, and here it is where somebody's gonna go to work on it. There's a lot of work to be done, as I did, and I had a great time doing it. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for visiting my channel. Come on back soon and often. It's coffee time.